Hey, folks. So we are two minutes away from our start time. Today's date is the 29th of August, 2018. This is Global Tarot Circle. It is our monthly gathering of uh, tarot people from around the world, around the web. Uh, we'll start officially in just about a minute. Um, so as you come in, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, oh, Tabitha, you're the first one here. So glad you're here. Yay. Um, go ahead. As people come in, I would love to see you tell us who you are and where in the world you are. And uh, what's your relationship with tarot? Are, are you new? Are you, have you been reading for a long time? Hey, Neil, nice to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person real soon. Glad you're here. Lorene is here. Happy to see you all here. If you have your cards with you, there's going to be an opportunity to do some readings for each other coming up in just a few moments. If you don't, that's okay. You can still get a reading. Hey, Kristen, glad you're here. Okay, so now we got some people coming in. Let's get going with some burning questions. What we're doing today, we'll be here for an hour. Stay with us for as long as you can. And I will say that if you happen to be watching this in archive on Facebook or YouTube, obviously if we're not responding, it's because we're no longer live, not because we're rude. Well, maybe we're rude too, but well, not really. Hey, Celeste, glad to see you here. Okay, so now is the time to start with burning questions. A burning question can be one of two things. If you have a question about tarot, about tarot operation, about a particular card, about tarot techniques, this is a great place to ask it. If you have a question that you'd like to ask a room full of tarot readers, a question about your life, if you don't mind answering, asking it in public, we don't mind answering it. We'll all be happy to read for you, so go ahead and Ask your burning questions. Hey, Kimberly Essex is here. Glad you're here. Chris Ann in New York. So glad you're here. Hoping to see you in Connecticut coming up soon. Angie is here. So glad you're all here. Um, I thank you all for being here. Karen is here. And uh, let's see. Let me just uh, let me just check my list here and make sure that we have uh, all of our all of the questions i collected some questions earlier and i want to make sure we got them uh wow uh jan is here from chicago very good and uh lori from connecticut glad you're here i'll be in connecticut very soon would love to see you then oh and celeste has started us out with a question she wants to know our thoughts on the hermit card on the Hermit card. I sing Ning, Ning Jay is here. So glad you're here. We're going to be talking about tarot meetups as you requested. My neighbor Lisa is here. So a lot of you are coming into the room. I'm so glad you're here. I'm not going to be able to say hi to all of you personally, but know that you are all welcome. And we're so glad that you're here. So Celeste has started us off with a question, which is tell us about the Hermit card. So I would like all of you to ring in with your thoughts on the Hermit card. And this is the thing. If you ask a question, I'm not going to be able to read all the answers. I'll give you my answer, but there's going to be a lot of good answers in the thread. So make sure you check it out. Okay, so I'll start my thoughts on the hermit. So one of the most interesting things to think about when you think about the hermit is the original hermit was not holding a lantern. We think about the hermit as holding the lantern of wisdom for all to see, and that's a beautiful thing. But originally, it was an hourglass. The hermit is Father Time, and he was holding a time piece. Now, later that turned into a candle, but it was still a clock because people used candles to tell time. So when you think about the hermit, the first thing you want to think about is, okay, he holds the lamp of wisdom, but he's also holding a clock. And so one of the important things about the hermit is patience. The hermit tells you to be patient. The hermit is also about loneliness. And sometimes when this card comes up, it is simply to say, hey, you should call your friends. You're lonely. Um, 
the hermit is also about wisdom, knowledge, and higher education. And you think about how these things go together. Patience, loneliness, knowledge, whether it's higher education or deeper spiritual knowledge, you can never have those things without patience. And you can never have those things if you're not willing to be in your own company. So those are some of my thoughts about the hermit. Um, do, 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 do. Let me just look here. What do we got? Okay. And we've got Leisha is here with our first question for reading. Tabitha says, the hermit is a great reminder to pause with yourself. That is beautiful. I love it. Uh, D says, it's great for study and mature introspection, not great for social life. Anna says, as to the hermit, I sometimes think about Diogenes. And Kristen Cardona, hey, hope to see you when I'm in Connecticut soon. To me, the hermit is the hierophant that lives inside me. It's my direct link to God's spirit when I cut out the middleman. It's awareness through isolation. Oh, I love that. Here's Amy Mauser. So glad you're here. Also talking about the hermit. Uh, Lisa says, Hermit tells me to slow down. Amy says, Hermit, taking time in sacred space to connect with internal wisdom and direction. So lots of good stuff there. Let's go ahead and keep on ringing in with your thoughts about the Hermit. And I think it's important with tarot, especially with the Major Arcana, to remember that each card offers us a spiritual lesson and also divinatory meanings. So that spiritual lesson about taking time and looking within and being patient and connecting to spirit, that's all there and that's all good. And very often in a reading, that's what it will mean. Sometimes the hermit will simply show up in a reading to say, time to go on for higher education. You know, so the cards can be very spiritual and very mundane at the same time. Okay, so now let's go right into some readings. And if you have a question for a reading, we're going to get to as many people as we can. We're doing burning questions for the first half hour or so of our time together. So any question you have about tarot or any question you have for a reading, we're going to start with Leisha. So if you have your cards, go ahead and get them. And the first question is Leisha wants to know if he's going to get a raise. So if you'd like to ring in on that, what you're going to do is put his name, Leisha, L-E-I-S-H-A, the name of the card you got. We're doing one card readings, but because we're a whole group, it becomes a full reading. And your interpretation. Don't just tell us the card. Tell us the card and your interpretation. So for Leisha, Seven of Cups reversed. You know, That's not a a quick, yeah, you're going to get a raise. There may be a lot of confusion in your workplace, a lot of changes in your workplace, but the reversal here tells me that some of that's going to settle down and some new information will be revealed. So see if anyone else gets any better information about whether or not Leisha will get a raise. Hey, Joanne Matthew, glad you're here. Okay, let's see. Kimberly says, the light version of the hermit makes me think of the idea of let your inner light shine from the Christian Bible. Loved that verse as a kid. And it's funny because I use that for the sun. Okay. Oh, Neil, very good, very good. So I'll be seeing you very soon. But in the meanwhile, Neil, anything... um. General question for Neil. He just wants to know what's coming up for him. So if you want to share some information with Neil, just put down his name, Neil, N-E-I-L, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation, what's coming up for Neil. Neil, Ace of Pentacles reversed. Some changes in your business. Okay, Ningje uh, thinks about the hermit as contemplation and reflection, agrees that it is a pause to go inward. Okay, so Kimberly has a question for a reading. Anyone want to read for Kimberly? Just put her name, the name of the card, and your interpretation. Here's her question. 
Okay, what do I most need to focus on business-wise? And what she says is she has multiple interests. In her business, there's tarot, there's art, and there's meditation. And so that's confusing her. Okay, let's see what we got here. What should Kimberly focus on business-wise? Huh. The tower reversed. So here's going to be my interpretation. I think you have to look at the very foundation and recognize that all of those three things are connected, that there's a way that this shouldn't be confusing. Find the way to do all three that's not confusing, that works, that connects them at the foundation, and you'll have your perfect business model. Until you do that, you're going to be frustrated and struggling. Find the center there, and you'll be good. That's what I think. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Okay, Leslie. Hey, Leslie, nice to see you. Very good. Glad you're here. So, we're going to read for Leslie. If you'd like to read for Leslie, just put her name, the name of the card you got, and your interpretation. And again, if we're reading for you or answering any questions for you, make sure you're reading the comment thread. Go ahead and chat amongst yourselves. That's what we're here to do. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom here, and most of it isn't coming from me. It's coming from you guys in the comment, comment thread, so make sure you interact with each other. Okay, so the question for Leslie, what is the energy surrounding my career within the next three months? What do we see for Leslie's career? Go ahead. If you'd like to read for Leslie, you know what to do. Queen of Cups reversed. There may be some stuff going on here that you're not really going to like that's not going to feel good for you. This may have to do with other people. It might have to do with your reaction to other people. The advice here don't take things personally, and don't emotionally attach to the job. The next three months might be a little tough, not terrible, but also not the most joyous. Okay, let's see. Okay, question for Ning Jay. Uh, what is holding me back from being successful in my new business endeavor as a professional tarot reader? Well, have you read my book? You know, I was going to have it with me here in my reading room so I could show it, but I didn't. It's out in the administrative office. But I am the author of Fortune Stellar, What Every Professional Tarot Reader Needs to Know. So there's that. Um, but let's do a reading for this. Okay, so the name is spelled N-Y-I-N-G-J-E, Ningje. The question, what's holding me back from being successful in my new business in Denver as a professional tarot reader? What do I have to take care of to move forward? If you'd like to read for Ningje, go ahead and put the name, the card you got, and your interpretation. This is for you. Ooh, the world ain't nothing holding you back. You're fine. I think the problem might be expectation. It takes a while to get things going. The world tells you to take the big view, take the long view. The other thing. The world suggests to me, I, I wonder if you are primarily internet related. Um, although we're also doing your question today about in-person meetings, so probably not. Probably you do have an in-person business. This would say, you know, really focus on both. Focus on local business as well as building international business. Focus on doing both. But honestly, I see good things for you here. And think that just patience and taking the big view will help you, really. I'm not sure you're held back. I think you think you are. Okay, lots of readings going on here. Let's see what we got. Okay, Marion Kirk, nice to see you. Hey, folks, I'm out of work just now, but I've applied for a job I really, really want. Any clues from the cards? So if you want to read for Marion, you know what to do. Her name, the card... Your interpretation. Will she get the job she applied for? Will she get any job? Will she ever work again? What do you think? Eight of Cups reversed. 
so for me this suggests that you may really be upset about the out of work situation um this this would say to me there is some potential that you will get the job you want but it's not like the happiest most positive card let's see what else comes up here my advice to you, Marion, is be careful about how you're feeling about all of this emotionally. Stay positive. Don't attach to anything other than your knowledge that things will move forward in the right direction. Okay, let's see what we got going on. Do, 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 Okay. Let's see. So we've got Mike and Linda. I'm thinking we're talking to Linda. Yes, we are. Okay. My daughter Shelly's boyfriend just went to boot camp. Will the daughter and her boyfriend get married? She really wants to know, please. So, you know, this is a really interesting question. Um, cause there's, there's so much to look at in a relationship beyond marriage. Uh, we'll play with this, but I would say there might be other more immediate questions here. So if you'd like to read for Linda about the boyfriend and the daughter and what we see for their future, go ahead. Just put her name, Linda, the name of the card and uh, your interpretation. What do I see for Shelly and her boyfriend? Hmm. Empress reversed. I feel like I again I and I, I felt this way about the question itself. We may be putting the cart ahead of the horse. And I know that, you know, in the military situation, often we get married earlier than we otherwise would, uh, because of just because of the military situation, because there are reasons to do that. Uh, but the Empress Reverse, in a way, speaks not to Shelley or Dalton, but to you, Linda, that you may have some worries here. Either you yourself are worried for Dalton's safety, and um, I just want to pull another card on that. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Um, or you're worried about the safety of your daughter's heart. But I feel like, you know, yes, she really wants to know, but your heart is very invested in all of this, too. So there's a, a real comment here just about, I, I think you and your daughter have a close relationship, and I think that's a really good thing. Um, but when I look at this in speaking to the relationship, I would say that, you know, I would say let's not put the cart in front of the horse, that there may be some conversations that need to be had first before that important step is taken. So let's see what other people have to say about this relationship. Um, we'll see what we got going on. Okay, let's read for Karen. Karen, my Pennsylvania friend. Work is a struggle for Karen right now. What to do? Okay. If you'd like to read for Karen, her name, Karen. Um, the card, your interpretation. What should Karen do about the struggle of her job? Knight of Cups, move forward with love. It will get better soon. Try not to be in a place of anger or resentment. If other people treat you badly, you just smile and be nice. Cover your ass, but smile and be nice. Bring love to the situation and it will get better. Okay. Hey, Linda Rogers. Um, oh, I just blew right by Angie. I'll come back to you, Angie. Sorry. Linda Rogers. And we've got two Lindas here. So we're going to call Linda Rogers, Linda R or Linda Rogers. Uh, she wants to know she's starting her new diet plan and is doing a weight loss spell. How will it go? What information can we offer Linda R or Linda Rogers regarding her new plan for weight loss and her magical intervention thereof? 
Seven of Swords reversed. You know, what you have to do is get out of your own head here. I think the magical piece is a very good thing because that's going to help you do that. You absolutely can succeed. Just recognize the connection between your emotions, your thoughts, and the weight. And as a person who struggles with weight, I'm right there with you. I get it. I absolutely get it. Okay, let's go back to Angie. Sorry, I didn't mean to blow right by you. Uh, she wants to know about her love life. Is anything coming in for Angie regarding her love life? If you would like to read for Angie, you know what to do. Her name, the card, and your interpretation. Any love for Angie? Yes! Yes, yes, yes. I got the emperor. And in this case, I'm going to interpret the emperor as a stable, decent person. The kind of person you can count on and appreciate and even have a family with if you want. So I would say yes, 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 and very soon. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Lots of readings going on. Okay. Okay, and if you do a reading, make sure you put the name of the person you're reading for because we've got a million readings going on. Oh, my friend Amy Mauser. Okay, her question. What does the universe want her to know? If you would like to read for Amy, her name, A-M-I-E, the card and your interpretation, what does Amy want to know? And you might remember that when she first started with us, she was Amy Watson. Her name has changed, not to protect the innocent, but indeed because she and Ryan got married as they threatened to. So congratulations to both of them. A better couple I have never seen. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. What does the universe want Amy to know? Ouch! Ouch, ouch, ouch. So here is a teachable moment, folks. What do you do when you get a hard card? for an uplifting message. Amy, Ten of Swords, my friend. So a couple of things. There may be something going on here that is really triggering you. Something, I, I don't think this is really related to anything actually going on in your life that that is this, but I feel like you're getting triggered something fierce and you need to be really good to yourself and you need to really calm down. And you need to look at, you know, if we think about these swords, these swords represent thoughts, beliefs, words. So what's going on here? Uh, are these your thoughts? Are these someone else's thoughts? Is this the committee in your head doing something? I think, um, I think that you, what the universe wants you to know, Amy, is you need to allow yourself some healing and you need to remove from yourself whatever this energy is because I don't think it's based on anything real, not now. You've had a lot of real stuff in the past that was really hurtful and I think a lot of that might be getting triggered. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, do, 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 lots of readings here, um, lots of conversations going on. Okay, do, 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 questions, questions, questions. Actually, what I'm seeing is answers. I'm looking for questions. So many people giving readings. This is such a great thing that we can all gather together and read for each other. I just love this. We have people here from all over the world, all kinds of different uh, time zones. We got Russell here in Connecticut. Hey, you know, I'm teaching a tarot class in Connecticut coming up on September 9th in New Haven. Would love to see you there. Reach out if you need more information. Oh, and you've got a question. Will I find a normal life again? Okay, if you'd like to read for Russell. Just put his name, Russell, the name of the card. And your interpretation, Russell is looking to find a new normal. What can you tell him about that? Four of Cups reversed. It starts with you. You have definitely had some stuff happen that has taken you out of your comfort zone in not a good way. 
But at the end of the day, it's all about attitude. When you can't control your situation, you have to control your attitude. And that is not easy. But you know what? I really feel like even over the next three or four months, you're going to find new opportunities. You're going to find new possibilities. Open yourself to it. It's not the old normal. It is a new normal, but it'll be an okay normal. That's what I think. Okay. Hey, Irene, it's nice to see you here. Okay. Hey, me, Miranda, my friend Miranda. Okay, let's read for Miranda. Miranda, I'm waiting for a response from literary agents about the status of a book that I've written. It's been 13 weeks since I sent him my novel. Any idea when I may be hearing his final answer? Okay, if you'd like to read for Miranda, you know what to do. Put her name, the name of the card, and your, uh, and your interpretation. Okay, for Miranda. It could take another six weeks. Be patient. Be patient. You know, the fact that you haven't heard is probably good news. It means it's being considered. Okay. And I just saw a, um, I saw something come through from Celeste uh, regarding a diagnosis for Charlie. And so I'm just going to jump in on that one. And then Joanne has a health question too. So we've got two health readings. Obviously, that's a teachable moment. Unless any of us here are doctors, we're not doctors. But I think that as long as we refrain ourselves from taking the place of a doctor, ringing in on health issues is not necessarily a bad thing. So let's do a reading for Celeste regarding finding a diagnosis for her husband, Charlie. She wants to know what we might be able to tell her about that. Her name, Celeste the name of the card, and your interpretation. Okay. Page of Cups. Yes, and I think it's gonna. It's not going to be too much of a problem. The diagnosis will be found. It will be communicated. And I think it will be workable. Now, Joanne wanted to know about her health. Uh, so, again, the question is, is there anything she needs to know? Um, you know, the only real answer, if the answer is yes, there is something you need to know, the only real answer is go to your doctor, and Joanne hates doctors, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how well this goes, but what do we see about Joanne's health? If you'd like to check in as well, you know what to do. Her name, the card, the interpretation. Joanne, I get strength. Um, you know, obviously, I, I would encourage you to see doctors more than you do. I would. But this has me not too worried about you. Okay. Let's see. Lots of good stuff going on here. Uh, lots of readings going on. And um, let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay. I am now, it's now final call. And uh, it's not last call for alcohol. That happens afterwards on here. No way I could drink and do this at the same time, man. No way. Um, but last call for questions. Uh, oh, and um, oh, Ningjie, you have read my book. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's terrific. And Tabitha, thanks for your good words about my book. I appreciate that. So if there are no other burning questions, oh, here's one, here's one, here's one. Um, from Lori Erickson, optimal timing for early retirement. Okay, and then I see Uma, so we'll do those next two, and then we will move on. So for Lori, L-O-R-E, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I apologize. Optimal timing for early retirement. Um, the name, the card, your interpretation. When should we retire? Seven of Cups reversed, as soon as you have your ducks in a row. It's not so much for when in terms of the calendar, it's when you get certain things done. Figure out what needs to get done, get it done, and then you're free. Okay. And, um, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. 
Okay. Marion wants to know if I'll ever visit Scotland. I would love to. I would love to invite me. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Uma, my friend Uma, general message from the universe, please. Anyone have a message from the universe for Uma? You know what to do. Her name, the card, your interpretation. Two of pentacles reversed, man. Lack of resources. You're busy, busy, busy. There's no time. There's no money. It's all over the place. It's frustrating and it's fine. You are doing it just fine. You will have the money you need. You will have the time you need. Your kids will be okay. You may not get enough sleep and you may feel frazzled, but you are fine. That's what you need to know. It ain't easy, but you're doing it right. Okay, and I saw a couple of other things. Uh, Anna Maria sent here from Tabitha. I appreciate that. Irene, my friend Irene, she wants to know about her love life. What would you like to tell Irene about her love life? She's been busily doing readings for other people. Let's do her a solid. What do you see here? Okay, Irene's love life. Two of swords reversed. I wonder if there's actually more than one person that you might have interest in, or if you're trying to make a decision about a particular person or situation, or even if you're trying to decide how to go forward in this way. But I have to say, it's up to you. The fate of your love life, Irene, rests with you. You have to figure out what you want and go get it. Okay, go ahead and finish up any readings you want to do, especially for our last couple of people. Go ahead and read for them. I see that happening. Go ahead and I'm going to introduce you to our topics. And what usually happens here is, you know, this is always a cacophony of confusion. That's what makes it so much fun. Um, so we'll have the readings continue. We, we won't take any more, but still feel free to do the readings you want. I see that's happening. And we're going to bring up some other topics, ring in on them as well. And the first question came to us from Sarah. And let me just say, well, where did those questions come from, you might wonder. We have a Facebook group. It's called Global Tarot Circle on Facebook. If you're not a member, please do join. We share exercises and share thoughts throughout the month. Not a lot. We could do more. Do more. Do more. But before we go live... I always ask for questions. What do you want to talk about? And that's where we get our that's that's where we get our topics. So if you want to influence what we talk about, join our group, Global Tarot Circle on Facebook Live. Just ask to join. Okay, so Sarah asked the first question, and this is a question I really don't have much experience on. So I'm gonna throw it out there and see who else can speak to this. And she asked about making your own deck. She wants to make a deck. And she wants any ideas or advice about that. So I'm going to share with you what I know. And anyone else, if you have made a deck, if you've thought about making a deck, um, go ahead and, and share your process and your thoughts. Sarah, I see you're here. Were you thinking about making a deck just for your personal use? Or were you thinking about making a deck for publication? I will tell you, within my experience, I do see some people who have made decks for personal use, and that's a great thing, but nine times out of ten, if you start making a deck for personal use, it's so much work, so much goes into it, ultimately you're probably going to want to publish it. Now, when we talk about the process of making a deck, there is, you know, I eventually, I think I would like to make a deck. I'm not an artist. I can't draw. So if anyone is an artist and want to wants to collaborate with me, we can talk. Uh, but I, I do think that's something I will do eventually. Um, but the deck in my mind that I've always wanted to make is the Grateful Deck. I want to make a deck that is based on the culture of the Grateful Dead. Problem is copyright infringement. One of the things you have to be very careful about if you do a theme deck is that you are not using themes or images that have copyright protection or trademark. So, you know, I've never gone forward on that project, but gee, someday I would really like to. Um, so, so Sarah says she'd like to illustrate decks. And the thing is, if you're an artist, even if you don't know a lot about tarot, you can team up with someone like me who knows a lot about tarot but can't even draw a stick figure, 
and be a team. And, and that works out great. So the thing is, I know a lot of tarot artists who have illustrated tarot decks not knowing much about tarot at all, including the great pixie Pamela Coleman Smith was hired to create this deck. She called it a large job for very little money and she did it over the course of one summer. So, you know, if we can use this group to hook up writers and artists and tarotists and artists, you know, maybe we can produce some decks. So there's, that's what I have to say. There's some conversation going on in the group. Maybe there's some more good stuff going on there. Um, D says, pay attention to scale. Some decks are lovely, but the scale is too small for the card and it looks crowded or you have to strain to see it. Amen. Amen. Um, Okay, very good. And apparently there are some decks in progress going on in this group right now. So how great is that? So the next thing we're going to talk about, and this was a question from Joanne, we're going to talk about tarot spreads. Her question was, do you use a positioned spread? Do you use a spread without positional meanings? Is one better than the other? What do you think about that? And I'm going to ring in on that right now. I think that every good tarot reader needs to be able to use position spreads and know how to interpret cards within positions. And every good tarot reader needs to be able to look at a series of cards, two, three, four, five, six cards without positions and get information from it. I think you need to do both and I think there's a time and place for both. Very often in the tarot groups, and <coughs> excuse me, I'm wondering if you guys have any favorite tarot groups. I really do like tarot nerds. In fact, Uma turned me on to them. I think they're great. Of course, I also love tarot professionals, even though it's not a group of tarot professionals, and that bums me out, but oh well, it's still a great group. But I notice in a lot of the tarot groups, people are doing this three-card spread with no positions for all kinds of different questions. And then people will do a Celtic cross for a very specific question. And, you know, I think the whole thing is you have to figure out which, which technique is best for the kind of question you have. So ring in on this. Ring in on how you work with spreads. My thought is, if you're doing a general reading, it's best to use a comprehensive spread, a spread that has positions for different departments in life so you can see what's going on. So for that, I really like a, a spread. Now, Lorraine calls it the three-card blob. I can't stand it. I know. I know. what You know, it is theorized. I, I think it was Dan Pelletier finally in one group said, why are we doing this? Where is it coming from? And it was theorized that it's uh, Terry Donaldson's 123 Tarot, which is a great book and a great technique, but it's meant to be a teaching thing, not the end-all be-all of how to read. Um, Lisa wants to know, has anyone ever done the Wheel of Destiny spread or one with just the major arcana? In fact, Mary Greer, if you go to Mary Greer's blog, she just posted about a major arcana spread that is a pyramid that, much like a Lenormand spread, uses all of the major arcana. And so where they fall is what makes the reading, which is kind of cool. Um, now, what about making up spreads? I mean, I make up a lot of spreads because that's a thing tarot readers do, and I publish them, and then they become spreads. But do you make up spreads? Do you make up spreads for yourself? Um, I really kind of like to do that. So I think that's the thing you can do either on the fly for a particular question or just in general, in general. So um, let me share with you, before we go on to our final topic, let me share with you a spread that I did for the beginning of the academic year um, that's in my newsletter that went out today. And maybe you'd like to do this with me. So this is a three-card spread about learning. 
The first card is, what do I need to learn right now? The second card is, how do I learn it? And the third card is, what will the result of learning that be? So if you'd like to do this three card spread for yourself and share it here, or later on, share it in the Global Tarot Circle group, please do. What do I need to learn is the first one. How will I learn it? And what will the result be? And I'll share with you what I got, and then we'll go on to our final topic, which is about tarot meetups and gatherings. That was suggested by Ning Jay. And I'm psyched to talk about that because we just had like 22 people at Panera on Sunday. Um, so I, I have some thoughts about tarot gatherings. So let me share with you what my spread was. What do I need to learn? Five of Wands. I need to learn how to multitask <laughs> a lot better than I do. How do I do it? King of Pentacles, I just need to get serious about it and do it. What will the result be? I will be much happier and feel more emotionally free because more of my work will be done. Yay. Okay. Not the most profoundly spiritual reading, but hey, it was practical and true. So go ahead and do that spread for yourself if you like and share the results. So um, let's talk about tarot gatherings. Have you ever been to an in-person tarot gathering? I'm not talking specifically about a class. I'm talking about a get-together, a circle, a meetup. Do you run a meetup? I actually run three tarot meetups, official meetups, through meetup.com. And years ago, I started something I called Tarot Circle. Long before we had meetup, long before we had social media, I had Tarot Circle. And in fact, Joanne Matthew has hosted Tarot Circle. Neil, who's here today, I think has been to Tarot Circle a few times. So um, the question that, um, that Ning Jay wanted to know is like, how do you do that? Is it a class? What do you do? What are the activities? So if you have ever organized or been to a tarot meeting that isn't specifically a class, that is a social gathering, um, what happens there? What do you do? What are the problems? What are the frustrations? I'll tell you about what I do and what I've learned. I would love to hear you ring in. So I started doing tarot meetings as opposed to classes, and I still do classes. But I started doing it right after I met Wald Amberstone of the Tarot School for the first time. This was at a an American Tarot Association convention. They don't have those anymore. Uh, in Albany, New York, back in the 1990s. And he talked about doing tarot classes for a variety of knowledge levels. Like I was thinking you have to have a beginner class, an intermediate class, an advanced class. And he's like, no, you can mix it up because we learn from each other no matter what. So that was a really eye-opening thought. And to this day, even my classes, like I'll teach beginner level classes, but I'll make sure there's some stuff there for experienced people. And when I teach classes for experienced people, beginners are welcome and they pick stuff up. So that, that helped me with my classes as well. So that really empowered me to start what I then called Tarot Circle. And, and this grew out of it. This is global Tarot Circle. So I started Tarot Circle in Plainfield, Connecticut in the year 2000. That was the first time I started doing tarot get-togethers or tarot meetings. And I have played with a lot of different formats. And here's what I have come to. First of all, doing a tarot meeting in a public place. It's a great thing because you have no size limitations and you don't have to pay to rent a hall. Um, I have done it in my home. I don't have a big enough home now, but when I had a big living room, I did it in my living room and that was fun. That was good. The public place is kind of cool in that people can buy food there. You don't have to serve food. And it's good to have food at these things. But, you know, I have heard some stories 
Oh, and there's a question. How are meetups different from classes? I will answer that question. I've heard stories from other meetup leaders of like, oh gosh, this one meetup in a coffee shop in New London that my friend Marcy, a lot of you guys know Marcy, that she led a few years ago. There was a guy there who was just totally disruptive and ridiculous and exposing himself in the meeting. I've never had anything like that, but when you meet in a public place, weird things can happen. So for me, the difference between a meeting and a class. First of all, a class, and I do occasionally teach free classes, but one of the differences for me is you pay for the class, the meetup is free. Uh, that's one thing for me, and that's something else. I used to charge for the meetings. It's $10, it's $5, it's a donation, and I don't even do that anymore. Um... I, uh, I, I, the meetups are free and that's a great energy. Now, but anyway, regardless of the financial piece, a class and a meetup, a class has a very clear plan. We're going to do this. This is what you're going to learn. These are my goals. And when I teach, I teach, you know, we're not going to have a lot of side conversation. We're going to do these exercises. We're going to learn this stuff. That's what a class is. Now, at a meetup, I may teach. We may have a focus and I may teach, but I'm not going to teach for the whole two hours. At the meetup, we're going to have time for conversation. I call it cards and conversation. We're going to have time for fellowship, time for conversation. I do try to teach, but it's more exercises and more conversation in the group. So it's less me and more them. That's the difference as far as I see it. Um, but I'd love to hear from other people. Joanne has a memory. I remember all of us crammed into that little narrow room in the A-frame. That was my first exposure to reading tarot. Oh, my office in Niantic. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yes. Celeste attended the Plainfield group. Oh, my gosh, that is so fun. Wow, that is so great. And Sarah says, I remember the tarot class we had when you showed up at Samhain Festival a few years ago. Loved it, went to both. Yes, you did. That's where we met. And you know what? I'm headlining at Samhain again this year. I hope people can make it. That's FPG, Florida Pagan Gathering, being held in Lakeland at Maddox Ranch, November 7th through 11th this year. Uh, Marion said she went to a meetup. All the people were older, and because I didn't take an RWS, oh gosh, I was reading from the wrong place. Let me, let me finish that thought. Okay. I took, uh, I took a different deck. I was told it wasn't real tarot, so I didn't go back. Oh, my gosh, yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, Tabitha says that in Lexington, Kentucky, there's a group that meets monthly. It's just starting out. I miss the established wonderment of Denver Tarot Meetup, but I'm grateful. Yeah, Denver Tarot Meetup is probably one of the biggest and best in the country. In the country, absolutely. Okay, so here's Linda doing the, the learning spread. What do I need to learn? How do I learn the result? If you haven't done that, um, go ahead and give it a try. And let's talk about what do you do if you go to a meeting and the people there are ridiculous? Well, clearly you don't want to go back, but, you know, I would take that as a sign that you should start your own. If you know more than the person leading the meetup, start your own. So how do you start? If you Now, to organize on Meetup, you actually have to pay. It's like $15 a month to run a Meetup. So if you do that, like I'm in business, that's a, you know, it's a tax write-off for me. I don't mind. But if you're new in business, you don't feel like you can invest that much or you're really doing it for your love of tarot, not for business, this is where it does make sense to charge at the Meetup to defray the cost and to offer enough value that people are willing to do it, I would really go with, um, I, I would go with donation rather, you know, maybe a suggested donation. Because if all you have to do is make $15 a month, that's not going to be that much. Now, again, venue. Um, in the U.S., I don't know how it is in, in other places, but in the U.S., Panera Bread has a commitment to host meetups. And so they will not kick you out. <laughs> no matter how loud you get, no matter how many people you have, they welcome you. Starbucks likes meetups as well. I don't tend to do meetups at Starbucks, though, because they're too small. 
Ah, uh, Marion says, I've had four people ask me this week to do some kind of tarot knowledge sharing thing, and now here you've wandered in here, and we happen to be talking about this because another person suggested it. There's a synchronicity there for you, Marion. So, <laughs> so, if you don't want to pay for Meetup, you can certainly do events on Facebook. You can gather your own email list. That's how I started Tarot Circle. It was just word of mouth in my own list. Now, Amy Mauser, if you're still here, you've done some gatherings, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're all encouraging you, Marion, to do this. So, hey, let's do a reading for Marion. Okay, let us encourage Marion to do this. The question is, if Marion is to start a group, what does she need to know? How can you, how, how can you help Marion? Pull a card for Marion, and we know how to do this. Marion, even though she didn't ask, I'm asking for her. Marion, the name of the card, and your advice, what does Marion need to know about starting a tarot group? Three of Wands, man. It's the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. This will be successful. And if indeed you are or want to be a professional terrorist, this will help. And, you know, that's the other thing I have to say from a marketing perspective. I do put some time and energy into my meetups. I do. And in my conference room, I've just opened my conference room, and my commitment is to do one free event in my conference room every month as well. And that's not a meetup um, a, like at Panera. It may be a free class. We're doing a Skillshare coming up next month where we're all going to read for each other. So, so the, the question is, from a business perspective, why is doing free events a good idea? And the answer is because free events sell paid events and free events get people to know you and then, you know, they trust you and they will book you for readings and parties. It does happen. And from a purely selfish level, you know, I am a tarotist professionally. It is my job, but I became a tarotist because I love tarot. And I have just as much fun at a meetup as anyone else might. And I love the fellowship of my tarot friends. You know, as much as there can be a lot of crap in the tarot community, I really do believe that your tarot friends are your best friends. And so there's a reason that goes beyond business to gather and share. So then the question is, well, what do you do in a group? How do you do it? And I think there's a lot of ways to do it. So at the meetup we did on Sunday, it happened to be the full moon. So we had a conversation about the moon card and we did exercises about the moon. We can always break into groups and read for each other. Now there's another local meetup here, not competitive with mine, but cooperative with mine. And they meet twice a month, what the organizer does is she finds a spread. She brings the spread in. They all do the spread and talk about it. It's that simple. Now, you can also do book discussion. You can choose a card. You can choose a spread. You know, it almost doesn't matter what you do. There are some times, um, there are some times when I don't prepare anything, quite frankly. I will show up with nothing prepared. And I just go around the table and ask for questions. What do you guys want to talk about? And that's what we do. Now, it's true. I've been teaching tarot for more than 20 years. So I'm pretty well versed. Uh, but there could be things that come up. You know, if someone wants me to go in depth on the Crowley tarot or Marseille, that's not really my thing. You know, so there might be questions that come up that I couldn't answer. If you are the leader and someone comes up with questions you can't answer, don't worry. They make Google for a reason. Um, and Marion says she's going to be brave. That's, uh, that's fabulous. So, and you know, Kimberly, going back to Kimberly, she says how simple it can be. Um, she tends to overcomplicate things. And we know, Kimberly, that you're trying to move forward. And um, there was someone else here who was feeling blocked about their tarot business. 
uh, feeling like it wasn't moving forward. You know, this is a good way to get some energy going. Now, I'll tell you something else I do with my meetup group. We do work for charity. Uh, and we've been doing this. Joanne has been part of this. We've been doing this for years. I think Celeste was part of this back in the day. And we still do it. We do it around the holiday time, and we might do it other times, too, where we do an open house. It's like a psychic fair. I have people come in to do readings of all different kinds uh, and healing sessions. In fact, Uma, I think, Uma, you're still here. Uma has volunteered for this a couple of times. And we do this uh, free readings, free healing sessions, first come, first served, in exchange for your donation of non-perishable food items. And we raise hundreds of pounds of food for our local food bank. Now, this is great practice for our students. It's great promotion for our professional readers. It's great for the community. It brings a lot of people in. Uh, we had, we did one in, um, in West Palm Beach a few years ago. This was our biggest. You know, I think Lee is here too. Lee F. Vulu is here. She does astrology at these. So a lot of you have participated in this event. Um, and, you know, I would love it if you guys would copy us, you know, to, um, to be able to share in this way. It's a wonderful thing and it's good for the community. Um, so it's, it's good stuff. Anyway, so we had this, uh, this office building. I don't know. I, I know Lee visited me. There are a few of you have visited me. The old office in West Palm Beach in the Harvey building. It was a 14 story office building that we pretty much took over on a Sunday in the conference rooms, in my office, and in the hallways. We're in the foyer. We're doing readings. We're doing Reiki. We're doing all kinds of stuff. We had 300 people that day. And we raised like 600 pounds of food. So what fun this can be. But here's the other thing. If you do a meetup, you might have a meeting where just a couple of people show up. And there are different challenges if you have a small group or a big group. Like, I was a little challenged on Sunday at a Panera trying to keep 22 people interested and attentive in an environment where there's so much else going on. You know, in a classroom, it's easy. The energy is contained and there are not distractions. In a big restaurant, there's noise, there's distractions, and the energy itself is not contained, so it's harder. A small group is easy as long as you, as long as you don't get freaked out that it's a small group. You know, if only two or three people show up, then you have so much fun with two or three people so that everyone else who didn't show up is jealous, you know, and that'll never happen again, right? So those are some ideas around organizing tarot meetings. And I really think it's a great thing to do. That's why I do it here online. And basically, the online meeting and the in-person meeting is pretty much the same. What if people show up to meetups? Oh, wait, see, I, I have to look over here. Uh, from Kimberly, what if people show up to meetups without a deck? Do you need to have extra decks on hand? Yes, you do. Bring your extra decks, for sure. For sure. Um... Oh, and Anna Marie's husband worked for Panera. That's fabulous. I love it. So we are coming to the end of our time together. Now is the time, as we close, for shameless self-promotion. Oh, here's Lee. You are still here. Yes. Yes. Ha, Dee says, if I can't keep someone's attention, no one can. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, thank you. So I'm going to give my shameless self-promotion, but I would like you guys to give your shameless self-promotion. Self now is the time to drop your links, to tell us about your projects, to share your websites, your Facebook pages. Let us know what you've got going on. Drop them in, drop them now, drop your links. Let me give you my shameless self-promotion. In one week, I'll be in Connecticut. I'm getting on a plane next Wednesday. I will be available for private readings at True Bikram Yoga in Madison, Connecticut for about two weeks. I will also be teaching a tarot class at True Bikram Yoga in New Haven, Sunday the 9th, and a class on intuition, magic, and essential oils the following Sunday in Madison. 
I will be in New York City on the Upper East Side on the on Friday the 7th and the morning of the 8th, because I got a place to be the evening of the 8th, and Neil knows that. Um, I am also available for parties, although most of my party slots are booked. So if you want to see me in New York, reach out. If you want to see me in Connecticut, reach out. If you want a house call or a small party, I think I, I have a couple places to fit you in, but not too many. And um, so that's my upcoming trip. My book, Fortune Stellar, available on Amazon. If you're interested in professional tarot, you need this book. My weekly newsletter is back. I did a weekly newsletter for the longest time. I let it go for a while because weekly was a lot. But now it's back. You can go to my website, christianagaudette.com, and sign up for it. And uh, I'll see you back here next month. And if you're not a member of our Global Tarot Circle group on Facebook, Go ahead and join. You will never miss another meeting. I want to thank you all so much for being here. I love you guys. Uh, you know, some of you I'm just meeting for the very first time tonight. Some of you I've known in person for more than 20 years. And uh, I just love it that we can meet together like this. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you all really soon. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.